Hello and welcome to Spotlight. This is our eighth episode. I just want to personally thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel, is following us on TikTok and Twitter. Uh, it's been an amazing eight episodes and uh, and thank you. Just, just a massive thank you for following the channel. Of course, we will be continuing our look at television production and what happens in television production um, today with uh, a fantastic interview. Uh, thanks to The Who Shop, uh, Alex at The Who Shop, who's done a, an interview coming up a little later. But of course, also uh, on today's Spotlight, we have the much anticipated, there, here, here it is, season 14 box set. We have one, two, uh, three, three of them to give away. Um, by the way, if you're, if you're still following us, um, we are still giving away the toys. That competition doesn't, doesn't end yet. So we've got one of these to give away. We've got one of these. All the details are in episode one. We've got one of those. We've got the uh, Eighth Doctor and the Dalek Prime thing. And all you have to do to enter that is follow us on TikTok at Spotlight1701. That literally is all you have to do for the toys. And we're just giving away one per person. So that means there's going to be four winners for the toys. Okay, but right now in Spotlight, we're going to do our Tweeters of the Week. Fantastic. And God, oh, we've seen some great tweets. Um, at Tim42NZ. Hi, Tim, um, for your artwork. It's incredible. Look at this. Ev if everyone should have this on their desktop wallpaper, if you're a proper Doctor Who fan, I mean, that is incredible stuff. Now, um, also, just on the theme of television production, at Lou underscore Jameson, of course, the famed Louise Jameson from Doctor Who, Leela, um, check out her showreel. She's put her showreel online, which is, a, we're going to look at showreels in a future episode, actually, and here's a perfect example um, she was absolutely outstanding and hello Lou if you're watching um, uh, she was outstanding in Silent Witness I mean if you didn't catch that episode of Silent Witness she was in she was brilliant although she did get bumped off spoiler there uh, at no I, I put this one in purely because I love this name at the geek's handbag <laughs> um, here's some lovely photos of the series 14 box sets if you want to go and have a look at that at the geek's handbag that's such a great title well done dude loving that um at a man of film is this one. Uh, it's Adam Mamoon. Uh, he's got some really lovely, lovely cool pics. And look at this just beautiful picture of him and Tom Baker. I mean, it's it's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, we're going to have a look at Alex's interview, and then after that, we're going to tell you how you can get your hands on one of these. And welcome to Spotlight. We are live. We are live with the one, the only Alex from the Who Shop. Hello, Alex. Hello, Brenda. Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome to Spotlight, and thank you very, very much for doing this. Very kind of you. A lot in this series, we've talked about the television production process, um, the development, the production, the post production. But you know, very, very rarely do people think about what happens after the show has aired. Um, you have been the successful owner of the Who Shop now for how many years? Oh my giddy on, since 1984, so 36 years, can wow. you believe it? So you were saying you're going from 1984, so the producer at the time uh, of Doctor Who would have been John Nathan Turner. Did you ever have any dealings with John um, up until the show was yeah, cancelled? When we first um, went to the BBC with the idea of opening the shop and become licensed, uh, we went to a lovely chap called Christopher Crouch. And Chris Crouch was the most lovely, sweet chap. And then we went and we met uh, J&T. J&T knew, you know, how he wanted things to run. And, and again, he was helpful to us and we knew him over the years. And we had a very good relationship with the BBC. I would often get phone calls from various people within the departments asking, OK, well, what are people wanting for video? There's a strange thing that used to be out many years ago. It was called video. Yeah. <laughs> and they used to ask us, OK, what are people asking for? So we would literally do straw polls from people, from customers, from people who would call up, because, of course, this is years before the web and ask them what they needed, what they wanted. And we would then pass on those um, needs and wants and requests. And the beat, bless them, were very, very good and would listen. And 
many of the items that we requested, they brought out on oh, video. Wow. But obviously now it's being run by um, Russell T. Well, it was then Russell T. Then it was Stephen Moffat. Now it's Chris Chibnall. Russell T. Davis was absolutely fabulous when the series came back. Um, because I was invited uh, to go to the press launch. I went and thanked him for inviting me. And he went, oh, of course you should have been here. Absolutely should have been here. You kept the show going. The shop over the last few years has seen quite a big expansion from the from the from the broom cupboard that was the original shop <laughs> with that beautiful Dalek. Hello, Brendan. You could not cram any more into that shop. It was so wonderful. It was like a sweet shop for a Doctor Who fan. It was absolutely amazing, that shop. Absolutely. It was crammed. And the joke is, we didn't have much storage. So we used to store things in the ceiling. So when you walked <laughs> in above your heads, <laughs> there was lots and lots of further goodies <laughs> that would have gone on the shelves when we got a space for it. And um, so we were on the high street for 19 years. Wow. Absolutely brilliant along there. Um, we'd outgrown it within oh, easily five or six years of us being there. And we kept looking and looking and looking. And purely by fluke, we met with a, a great guy from the council and met with a lovely lady uh, who happened to be married to the West Ham uh, football club owner. And arrangements were made, and I took over the old West Ham souvenir shop. So as you can imagine, it's got air conditioning, it's got heating, <laughs> top of the range, everything. So we really fell on our feet, and I'm very grateful to the West Ham guys uh, for allowing me to get into that property. Are you surprised? This is this is the big question I have for you. I, I mean, obviously there are things like the DVDs, there are things like these toys and stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy the amount of stuff. Yay. Are, 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 you, are you surprised that some of these items, like for example, the latest release of the season 14 um, Blu-ray Doctor Who box set is already selling on Amazon, or not on Amazon, on eBay for 130, 140. I've even seen one at a thousand pounds, which is crazy. Oh. Are, are you actually surprised at the value some of these things can have? I'm not surprised at the. Uh, I'm going to be very, very um, naughty and call it. The classic years. Mm -hmm. I am not surprised because they, I think a lot of the classic periods are incredibly undervalued, which is what you're doing today, getting the background of people who have been in the merchandising uh, business is, is a great thing because you need to get your numbers right. And the only people who are making that extra money are unfortunately unscrupulous people who are buying them and then selling them through all the various, you know, mm. auction sites. And that's a shame because that extra money had the Beeb and their associated people sold those DVDs, that would be more money in the coffers for them to go forward, produce something else and have the extra finances. Yeah, I was astonished actually that the season 12 box set, you know, there was one on eBay, I saw the other, £650. Yeah. I'm like, goodness yeah. me, BBC, yeah. you're massively missing a trick there, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, go on then, go on then. Sp right, here, here's, an, here's another one. That, uh, <laughs> what's the most expensive item you have in your shop? It's a fob watch, but you can turn it into other things so it has other components to it so you can have you could have it as a wrist watch you could have it as a normal fob you could have it on a chain watch so it's got all these other factors they were supposed to do 80 as far as i'm aware there's only there's only 40 got out and that costs um i think it's about 700 pounds you used to have a thing on the wall at the back, which I, there was one item that if I was to have ever bought, um, if it were, I mean, it's never been up for sale, of course, but um, you had the Metabilis crystal at one point, I and I knew. thought, I, I love that thing. That. And then you had like a gun from Genesis of the Daleks, which I thought was very cool, yeah. which I think was from Galaxy 4 even earlier. But, um, but oh, that Metabilis crystal, oh, well, what you would give. Um, but tell us about yeah. the museum. What's in it? There is a very special access way, 
uh, and obviously it's access to the TARDIS bars are always different because you have to open it with a key. So you yourself open the key, use the key to open the TARDIS to go into the museum. Okay. And it is bigger on the inside <laughs> because obviously it opens up. And I would think that the museum is probably bigger than the old broom cupboard. Oh, really? Tra- oh, God, right, it's oh, huge. yes. Because <laughs> we're in over 2,200 square feet now. Blimey. We have items that go right the way across. We've got the stage play console in there. Um, oh, oh gosh, we've got Cybermen in there. Got we've got Marco Polo. We have got Mark Eaton's original costume in wow, there. Wow, that's, ama- have that's amazing. Start. Have you ever had an item that you've got in that you just didn't want to sell and either didn't sell or did, but very reluctantly? Yeah, somebody out there has got um, the, um, the the TARDIS manual, the the big, great, big manual, um, and times were hard, so I had to make a decision, and I sold it, and I so regret selling oh, that. No. I wish that would come home again. How important do you think the Who Shop is to the brand? Well, thank you for that. Um, I think it's vitally important because... The merchandise is so interconnected with the show. Um, These days, when um, a new series is brought out, they're already, even at the planning stage, already cross-thinking, how do we further expand this? And merchandise is a very, very useful tool in how um, a series can either work or have a longer shelf life. Viewers, if you get a chance to visit the Who Shop, Alex, tell them where it is and how they can get there. Okay, it's very easy. We, our closest station is Upton Park. And literally, you come out of Upton Park, you walk down Green Street, you turn left when you come to the pub. Don't go in the pub, otherwise we may never see you again. And we are up there on the left-hand side on the Barking Road. Um, and we're obviously with our website, www.thewhoshop.com. And you can obviously call us, uh, send us an email. And we'd love to see you. And, um, and it doesn't matter where you are, where you come from, because we have a lot of customers from all over the world and in the museum is our map and brendan when you see where the customers come from you will be astonished oh i i i do you know i don't think i will be <laughs> don't <forget. laughs> doctor who is ever alex from the who shop thank you very much for being part of spotlight today and uh and like i say we wish you all the best in the future thank you it was an absolute pleasure That's Alex at The Who Shop. Thank you so much, that, that's been amazing. Now, we've got three of these to give away, three uh, box sets. Now, unfortunately, two will still be sealed and one won't because I'm gonna open it now. Um, <laughs> so if you get the one that's opened, I won't, I won't damage it, don't worry. Um, so don't worry about it. Hi. Do you get a copy of one of these? Well, it's real, real simple. All you have to do for a copy of this, there's no questions to answer, there's nothing to do like that. You just have to make sure that you are following us on Twitter, at Spotlight1701, and you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put the, obviously you'll be watching this on YouTube, so hit the subscribe button, which is down there somewhere. Now hit that little icon and subscribe to us. We're gonna pick our winners from the subscribers, then we're gonna go over and see if you're on Twitter, and if the two marry up, then we will contact you, and also we will be announcing the winners on uh, a future episode, probably episode 10 or 11, as well as the winners of the toys. So remember to be a winner of the toys, you have to be following us on TikTok, but here it is. Um, this is the uh, this is the one with the guy who doesn't have a face, so he wears a mask and he's got a very deadly hand um, and he's probably a robot, but the hand has amazing talons on it and he's completely deadly. There you go, I've just mentioned all the titles in some shape or form. Brand new special effects for the talents of Wang Chiang. 
um, which is great to see that they're following that on. Obviously, um, when we were doing it on uh, years ago when I was a Doctor Who DVD producer, obviously um, we didn't get any money for optional special effects. So I wonder, are they getting extra special effects? So here it is. Um, this is it. Let's just do a very gentle, because this is obviously a competition prize. So we have to be very gentle with this. Um, these box sets are absolutely incredible. Look at that fantastic artwork on the back. Isn't that fantastic? Going down the Mandragora Helix. Fantastic. Let's just open up the inside. I haven't seen this myself, so this is amazing. Look, right, so here we go. This is this is our little front page. It's from the, uh, the Face of Evil. And we open it up on the inside, and oh, look at that. That is magnificent. Look at that. We've got... Tom there dressed in the Deadly Assassin outfit. That's incredible. The booklet is absolutely immaculate, but have a look at this. This is incredible. These CGI recreations of the TARDIS. I mean, that is that is just beautiful. Fantastic. Um, fantastic. So let's have a look. Let's be gentle with this. So let's have a look at the booklet. These are great. If you want to get things signed, if you fancy Tom getting signed for that, look, there's Tom's pick at the back um this is the third box set of course um because we've already had season 12 and we've had season 18 so that there's what i love about these booklets don't you is this bit up in the corner i know it's only part of the title sequence by bernard lodge but it is absolutely incredible um so that's the mask of mandragora beautiful this is the hand of fear i'll show that to you there. um hand of fear Look at that artwork, isn't that incredible? Such beautiful artwork. Uh, I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but there is, you've got on The Deadly Assassin, you've got making of documentary behind the sofa. Um, you've got James Atchison's directed Doctor Who. I wonder who made that feature? Maybe, it was me. Um, <laughs> um, you've got Nationwide, you've got the Gallifrey Encounter, The Frighten Factor, I wonder who made that one? It's me as well, sorry. <laughs> Terrible. Um, no, it's wonderful. Actually, interesting. Here's an interesting thing that you won't know. Um, the Frighten Factor documentary was actually an hour long and it was cut down to 20 odd minutes by the executive producer at the time. So, um, so that's The Deadly Assassin. Lots more going on in that book. Face of Evil here with two commentaries. I mean, isn't this just immaculate? It's just beautiful. Um, on the bonus disc, I always like to spin on ahead and find out what's what's on the bonus. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look, isn't, isn't that gorgeous? Um, so the bonus disc has Philip Hinchcliffe in Conversation. It has Life After Who, Tom Baker and Philip Hinchcliffe interview. Um, and of course, there there is the uh, beautiful uh, Louise Jameson, who I have met. Uh, and she is absolutely lovely. Um, we had a wonderful conversation about hugging. That's a whole other thing. Uh, so, uh, the artwork on the discs, here it is. I know this is upside down. I dread moving these around because obviously um, it's not mine, technically. So, here you are. It's the one for the Mask of Mandragora. Um, I love how they open. Oh, I, I worked with this lady. Lovely, absolutely superb for the Hand of Fear. Gorgeous. Um, this one is the Deadly Assassin. Absolutely amazing. This one is, oh, this is cracking. This is The Face of Evil. Look at that. I love this story, The Face of Evil. Um, here we go. This one is my favorite, Robots of Death. Now, Robots of Death, of course, have to flag up the fact that we interviewed Michael Bryant back in episode five. So check out the channels and you can have a look at what we were talking about with him. And there's the talent of Wang Chiang, probably arguably one of the best must be in your top 10 surely it's in your top 10 talents of Wing Chiang and then uh, that's across two discs and then disc eight has a beautiful picture of the TARDIS so there it is now I'm going to put all this back for our competition winner now um, remember this is all you have to do is you have to be following us on Twitter and you have to be subscribing to our channel um, feel free to make a comment in the in the um in, on youtube F feel free to make a comment under the video just to let us know that it's you and also let us know what your twitter name is if you really want to make sure because i must admit that is easier for us to understand so here we go there it is this is it the season 14 we have one 
two, three copies as well as the toys. Remember for the toys, you simply need to be following us on TikTok at 1701. Um, that is it. That's it. We do have the three copies. They've got to go, guys, because I've got mine already. So these are uh, three bonus ones for you. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. In uh, in the next episode, we have uh, we're going to look at voiceover artists, and we have an absolutely exquisite interview from Diane Perry, who interestingly enough was in Doctor Who. Uh, she was in The Doctor Dances and the Empty Child as Captain Jack's computer. <laughs> and she's joining, but she's a very good friend of mine and a, a wonderful talent. And she was in Thunderbirds and all sorts. So have a look at that. That's in our next episode. Thank you very much, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye from Spotlight.